What is going on you guys? This is Psycho Power Ranger once again here to bring you some has been hero tips and tricks to help you out. I've been noticing some articles and things of that nature, but not so many videos. On another point, I also think some of the tips aren't that good. So I'm here to kind of give some extra tips and that type of stuff. So we're going to hop into a game. I decided to use the standard hero rotation to kind of help out some of you newer people. But for everyone else, be helpful to the general majority. First and foremost, let me go ahead and explain the real reason you want to be using Curse of Frost. The thing about Curse of Frost is it has a couple hidden features that help you out in a lot of scenarios. When a opponent is frozen, it's almost as if they were stunned. Sure, they will not lose their stamina after being hit, but they will take all the hits as though they were stunned. This can be really helpful for taking out low health characters, and as we'll see in a little bit, you can highlight a lane to see how much health opponents have. So we're just going to go ahead and look at the map here and kind of decide what is the best way for us to go. Obviously we don't want to go up top, we'll miss the question mark down bottom. So we'll take a right here. It's a locksmith. Generally with locksmiths what I found to be useful is to pick up one key and call it a day. When I first started playing keys are for gold. I It must have been a broken thing, I don't know. All right, so now we're going to go up into a battle. And here's where most of the helpful hints I have for you guys are at. So there's a couple key features in this game that help you get better. Now, to the very first eye, you wouldn't be entirely sure what you want to attack, right? Because you have B lane, which only can attack a two stamina guy, which isn't beneficial. You have X lane, same issue as you have too many attacks. And you have the Y lane. Now, something that's important about these kamikaze guys is they will freeze you. Freezing actually has a secondary effect which will reset all your cooldowns. So when you're frozen, it'll be as if you used Curse of Frost. And that's not a good thing. So generally what I would advise is use your Curse of Frost on a guy with high amount of stamina and then get the freezing guy out of the way. Because he's going to reset your cooldown anyways, and that's going to be an issue. Now, what do we do next? Well, since we don't have any capital ideas and no way to split up our characters yet, we will go ahead and use our multi-attack here to open up our combos. We can then bring our three person down to hit him three times. Swap him back down to hit him one time. Swap again to knock him out. Now that all my characters are ready to move around, I can show you something very interesting. Pay attention to the monk. I can put the monk in any area I want him to go. It just requires you to do a couple extra movements. If you were to put your eye on another character, let's say the warrior, you can do the same thing with the warrior. He can move anywhere on the uh, level. So. What I'm trying to say is take time to move your characters around. You should be able to have the appropriate attacker every time. And in general, what you want to be doing is attacking the closest enemy to keep them at bay. Now in most circumstances you can see that the monk did not do a lot of damage. Avoid using the monk for physical engagements and only use him for breaking stamina. There are some situations as to why you would want to use the monk to do a physical attack, but in general, you don't want to. Now, the guy that was frozen, I made a mistake and was so encapsulated in explaining rules that I've missed my opportunity to get him frozen. Oh, never mind. Lucked out. So as you can see, he couldn't block the attack and we just got the 150. You can see here that characters have health. This enemy has 150. The one behind him has 400. This enemy's dead. He has 321 and the other one has 257. If you look at your character's damage, you can then start to decide if it's worth making a full on frontal attack with maybe double attack from the rogue or dropping a potato bomb first and then coming in for a hit. Because as you can see here, he has two, 321. I wouldn't be able to kill this guy in two sword attacks. So it's better to just whittle him down with attrition. However, this guy, has the potential to die from the warrior. Lastly, the thing that I want to cover is backstabbing. If you target an enemy further than an enemy in another lane, for example, this skeleton warrior, I can then swap lanes and allow my thief to backstab this skeleton. 
It only does six damage. I'm almost positive it's a percentage off of your physical damage. So the only true decent backstabber is your warrior until you have other items to buff your other characters. I'll show you what a warrior backstab looks like. He does 21. That's an actual decent amount of damage. So when backstabbing, you're going to end up using your warrior most of the Also, I think an important thing to note is you don't need to just exhaust all your spells as quickly as you can. I noticed that a lot of people were admitting to just using all their skills as quickly as possible. But as you can see from this scenario, I manage most of the game without even having to use the spells. Only until later down your pathway do the spells matter. Now, there will be times where you'll find yourself in a rut where you could use more spells, but for the most part, you should be able to manage without them. So for this example, I know that one swing from the sword cannot hit 236, but I do know that the lowest I can hit is 250 with two sword swings. That means I'll guarantee to kill that skeleton. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you were interested in that. I'm going to be quite honest, I haven't been making videos, but hey, maybe I will. We'll see what happens. Peace out.